Hello everyone, my name is Wilfred Adija. I am a plant breeder. Today I'm excited to share with you some information. Keep tuned, subscribe. Let's talk about heritability and best linear and biased predictions. So heritability is the portion of the variance that is due to genetic. If you have a population and you, you, you compute variability, the portion of that variability that is due to genetics is what's called heritability. And uh, we have this best linear and best predictions. These are uh, predictions which help plant breeders to select uh, plants or genotypes that are superior. They are unbiased and they are paced. They are preferred BLUPS, where we say it's blurbs. So today we are going to talk about heritability and best linear and best predictions. To do analysis of heritability and uh, compute best linear and best predictions, you need uh, to import the data set in R. So I have called this data set as Bali data. And uh, we use read.csv to, to import. I've uh, ensured that they are headers. The header is true. And uh, I run this command. Then uh, the next thing which you need to do is to interrogate your data to check if the, your data was uh, imported in the right way or it's, it's okay or it's fine. So let's look at the structure of our data. We use str, str, then you write our data here. We run. So down here in the console, you can see our data frame. We have a, a column called rep. You see this dollar sign means a column. We have a column called variety. We have a column called location and yield. So um, in variety, you can see we have uh, these uh, variables, which is at varieties, Labron, Velvet, Wiz, 38, and Pitland. Uh, the next thing is you may need to see the first six rows of the data. So you type head, then you write your name of your data, so that you can see the first six rows. These are the first here in the console. These are the first six rows of our data. Then also you may need to see the last six rows. We call tail. Use this tail command to see the first six rows. You click on that. Then you'll see here there's, these are the last uh, six rows of your data. It's important to interrogate your data. Because you, you will need to see if your data is structured well. And if you find that your data is not well structured, you can, you can do some amendment, amendments on it. So I want to attach this data by data so that when I do analysis, uh, R will just uh, search from this data directly without me uh, trying to explain where my data can come from. So I use attach. Uh, it's very important to me because sometimes we've, we forget to put the source of our data. Let me click that to attach. So uh, you may like to visualize your data. It's very important. You can visualize your data using histogram. Use this command hist. hist then you see the column that you want to see. I want to see column yield. You can see here I've, lit, I've written yeast and yield. So when R is going to execute this command, you remember we attached our data. So I do not need to write that this data is coming from Bali data. Then I put a column sign and then I write yield because I've already attached here. So R is going to do analysis on this yield by uh, searching our attached data. Yeah, in, the in these plots, you can see this is our histogram. 
you can see this data is not well uh, distributed it's not the normal distribution here is not uh, such fine so uh, if you find your data is not normally distributed you can uh, decide to go and transform it but we are not going to transform it because uh, this is uh, we just need to know how to compute stability and the blobs so we have visualized our data it's not too bad but you can see it's not well normally distributed uh, the next thing which you may like to do is to change your column columns as categorical variables categorical variables these are the factors but it's not a, a must you just this is how you do it you, if you don't know how to change this uh, your data into a factor you can refer to my previous tutorials you'll see how to change this into a factor so I'm not going to do that because uh, it's not such important here for you to run health ability to get variance components and run plabs you need to install a package called LME4 write install.packages into brackets you write LME4 then you install I've already installed this so I'm not going to install and sometimes when you during your analysis if your R does not have has not installed this RCPP you may get some errors saying that uh, R was not able to find RCPP so you will come and install this package RCPP um, I'm not going to install this because I've installed it and now what we do is to load our package LME4 the library just like the library LME4 after that you, you run and uh, from there now we can start computing our variance uh, components when we are computing the variance components we treat our effects as random the reason why we treat this as a random effect is because we want uh, the result to be a representative of a population uh, you can treat your uh, effects as a random when you feel that the main effects here are a representative of the population and the result from here can be inferred to a larger population because we want to compute these forest components uh, by looking on the yield uh, that's why I've written yield bar comp from the word yield variance component. So this is just a arbitrary name that I've just given this model. Then we use LMER uh, command. Then you write your explainable variable, which is yield. Yield is, is explained by variety, location, um, rep nested in location and variety interacting with location first of all before we look at this I want to explain uh, our data if we go to the environment here I want to double click here you can see this experiment was carried in three locations and two replication in each location and uh, four varieties in each in each uh, location so that's why you see our model LMER uh, we are explaining um, uh, the, this yield as it's explained by the variety location replications that are nested in location this percentage here in it means it nested in location so, and these are pipes eh? this is a pipe command uh, while replication is in a steady location and uh, they say a variety interacting with the location this interaction this is our model that we want to uh, calculate uh, variance component from so this is the command LMER after that you execute 
you can see that uh, down here in the console this error which say grouping factors must have greater than one sample level uh, what this means is that this model is over parameterized when the model is over parameterized it gives you very good estimates but those estimates are not reliable this is due to the fact that, that, that there is one observation there is only one observation for every value of these variable here and this uh, leads to spurious uh, results what it means that the variance components of this will not be the right variance component and also since it has affected this it will also affect the error variance so there are only two uh, ways to solve this issue the first one is to bypass this warning we have uh, commands that you can uh, include in this model to bypass uh, this warning so that we produced computing our variance components and the second uh, way to solve this issue is to use another model so I prefer using another model than bypassing these warnings if you bypass this warning you will not know how you are doing your work if it's you are correct or if you are wrong so if you want to bypass this you can search some commands uh, there are some commands which will help you uh, they are called LMER control just search LMER control which to mark LMER then you write control it's here then if you search this it's going to give here in help how to just bypass this uh, error information here but it's not good because it's good to see how you are your data you are analyzing your data so what I do here I go to this the second option which is in another model which is um, to just eliminate this from the model and the result which you get is equally uh, the same so I've eliminated this which is which with this one which is causing problems and uh, remain with this one so I want to learn this uh, this uh, model here I run. then to see the result you write summary of yield variance component of this model here that you have run summary oh, you can see here from the in the console we have groups we have variety interacting with the location this is its variance component variety this is its variance component location this is its variance component and the residue residue is just error this is its variance component so we are good to go the next thing is to compute heritability using these variance components and you know the formula of computing heritability here in this case producing heritability is the, just a taking a genotypic variance or genotype variance divided by a phenotype variance heritability is the portion of phenotypic variance that is due to genetics so if you get phenotypic variance inside that phenotypic variance we have a genotypic variance so heritability is computed by dividing variance of genotype by variance of phenotype so the importance of heritability is that it's helpful in, a, in when you want to make a decision on how the strategies that you are going to use to make selections if your trait has higher heritability that means you are going to select uh, early you're not going to advance your genotype down the pipeline for so long because you can make selection uh, precisely 
in early generations. This also implies that if you are if you have high health ability traits, it means you are not going to evaluate your genotypes or materials across many locations or uh, using so many replications. Because uh, you see these replications are the locations they just help uh, in uh, improving precision of selections. So if your trait is of low heritability, therefore you have to uh, evaluate your materials in large uh, replications and uh, across many regions and uh, you have to advance for a, a, a very good, a very, a very long uh, generations so that you make your selection. So heritability is computed by variety, variance of variety. This is a genotypic variance divided by this is a phenotypic variance. Variance of variety, this is a genotypic variance divided by, divided by variance of phenotype. You see a phenotype is just uh, the variety itself plus variance of location here, L is location plus variance of interaction of variety and location, you have to divide this by three because we had three locations. Plus variance of error. This is a residue variance. And this you have to divide, the, you have to divide it by three times two because the experiments was carried in three locations and in each location there was two replications. So this is the formula. So you come down here, you take this variance of variety divided by variety itself plus location itself plus interaction of location, this is 66 plus 84, divided by the number of locations plus variance of residue, which is error variance, divided by 3 times 2, 3 is the number of locations times 2, which is the number of uh, 3 is the number of locations times 2, the number of replications. After that, you will be having your broad sense heritability. So that is done on heritability. Now let's look at best linear and biased predictions, labs. So PLAPS are a very, is a very important uh, method in plant breeding or procedure in plant breeding. It's helpful in a selection. For example, uh, if a, a breeder evaluated uh, 20 genotypes uh, in 10 locations and also evaluated another population that has 10 genotypes in 5 locations, See here we have two population, population of 20 genotype evaluated across 10 locations and population, another population which has 10 genotypes evaluated across 5 locations. And then you need to make selection uh, on these, all these genotypes so that you select the best genotype. You see you're not going to make, as a breeder you're not going to make a very good selection because some were selected, were evaluated across 10 locations, while others were evaluated across 5 locations. You see there, you have confounding effects on environmental variability, confounding with genotypic variability. So you will have problems selecting the best. Your, your selection will be uh, unreliable, will be, uh, uh, will be biased because you have not taken account of the variability due to environment because there were environmental differences. So what breeders do is that on those populations they compute PLABS. So PLABS takes account of environmental effects and the missing data and another other information etc. What PLABS does is that it shrinks values of each genotypes towards the the mean it tends to shrink that value uh, of genotypes towards the mean. So, PLABS stands for be its best linear and best predictions. They are called best because 
the sampling variance of this value that you are predicting, that variance is minimized. The fa sampling variance of the predictions are minimized, so they are best. There is no much variance. They are not varying much from the mean. They are linear because the, these predictions you are predicting, they are a linear function of your observations that you made. And uh, unbiased, they are unbiased because mm, you are predicting value is equal to the true value or is near to the true value. So they are unbiased. So the, the importance you need to know about uh, labs is that they help uh, in accounting for environmental effects and also sometimes missing data. So they will help you to select uh, genotype from different populations that were eva eva evaluated across different environment, environments. So it will take care of that environment. So um, we run PLABS using the common variance components that we computed. You remember our variance component, we gave them the name yield variance components. These are the various components that we are going to compute labs from. We use this command run nav. So this command will tell R compute labs using the yield variance components and give the new data frame a name called my blab. So then you run this command. Then let's see the structure of this blab, which we have called my blood. My blab used str. Then you run. Run in the console here. You can see the list of three. Because we have three variances that we computed. A variance uh, due to a variety and the location. This interaction. A variance due to variety and uh, due to location. So these are blabs. This dollar sign I said, it means, it means a column. So these are columns, three columns. So the first column is for interaction of variety and location. And this one is blabs due to, due to variety. And these are location blabs. Remember we had four varieties. So if we want to make a selection based on this uh, on this plabs, plabs we have to ex extract plabs from this column for it. So to extract this plab plabs uh, for variety, you just write variety plabs because we need the variety. Then you write we call my plabs, and you put there the name of the column which you want to extract because our plabs we computed they are in this. Uh, list here which we call my blab. So from my blab, there is a column called variety here. You extract it and call it variety blab. Then you you run this. You can see here now we have variety blabs here in the environment. If I try, if I double click this variety blabs, you can see here we have our blabs. This is our genotypes and these are the plabs as simple as that so the next thing which we need to do is to save this in our excel uh, csv format so that you can access these plabs in excel so that you can make a decision by looking at your excel files so you use this command write.csv what are you writing you are writing variety plabs that we have just computed here. Write variety plabs and call that file variety plabs.csv. You can give it any name here. You can give it any name which you feel comfortable with. If I do this and run, you if you come to files, you will find that we have variety uh, plabs.csv 
and this one you will open it in Excel. You go to your folder and open it in Excel and make your decisions. But in R, they are here. We we did open them. They are here. We had four genotypes or four varieties, and these are the plabs. Then you make your selection based in on plabs. These are based linear and biased prediction. Thank you very much. I hope this video was helpful. And if you feel that it was helpful, kindly hit the like button and subscribe so that you can get more of this. Thank you.